When I cried to the Lord, he heard my voice. He rescued me from those who attacked me. Entrust your cares to the Lord, and he will support you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raised the dead to life in the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Prompt our actions with your inspiration, we pray, O Lord, and further them with your constant help, that all we do may always begin from you and by you be brought to completion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, today I have set before you life and prosperity, death and doom. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I enjoin on you today, loving him and walking in his ways and keeping his commandments, statutes and decrees, you will live and grow numerous and the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are entering to occupy. If, however, you turn away your hearts and will not listen, but let her stray and adore and serve other gods, I tell you now that you will certainly perish. You will not have a long life on the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and occupy. I call heaven and earth today to witness against you. I have set before you life and death, the blessing and the curse. Choose life then that you and your descendants may live by loving the Lord, your God, heeding his voice and holding fast to him. For that will mean life for you, a long life for you to live on the land that the Lord swore he would give to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The word of the Lord. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Blessed are they that hope in the Lord. Bless the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor walks in the way of sinners, nor sits in the company of the insolent, but delights in the law of the Lord and meditates on his law day and night. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. He is like a tree planted near running water that yields its fruits in due season and whose leaves never fade, whatever he does prospers. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Not so the wicked, not so. They are like chaff which the wind drives away. For the Lord watches over the way of the just, but the way of the wicked vanishes. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, The Son of Man must suffer greatly and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed and on the third day be raised. Then he said to all, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. What profit is there for one to gain the whole world, yet lose or forfeit himself? The Gospel of the Lord.
you can just begin to imagine the, the shock and the disbelief that the Jews at the time of our Lord Jesus felt when they heard this particular teaching that Jesus presented to them. If anyone wishes to come after, he must deny himself and take up his cross. Now we must remind ourselves that what we think right now, the cross as a religious instrument, a religious symbol, is not the way that the first century Jews sees it. Rather, they see it as probably the tool, the means for probably some of the worst uh, punishment for some of the biggest crimes that a, that a Jewish person could ever committed against the Roman Empire. So for them, the cross at that time was a symbol of cruel punishment, a symbol of death, of a humiliating death for any Jew who committed a very uh, a big crime in society. And so when the Jews heard that Jesus, this is the condition for becoming a disciple of Jesus, you can just imagine the shock, the disbelief that they probably have experienced in, re in receiving this, in hearing about this. And maybe for a lot of them, they probably would say that, well, all of the other rabbis, teachers uh, of the synagogues don't teach about this. Jesus is probably the first one who kind of came up with this particular idea. Yeah, it's true that maybe the other rabbis speak about uh, denying oneself, letting go of the things in oneself that prevent one from attaining a better kind of life in society, but never to the point of taking up your cross or, or kind of thinking about putting yourself to death as a means of discipleship. And so we can just imagine that this particular shock that they experience with this. But I think that it is in that that we can see the intention of our Lord Jesus for really, become, for really being clear with this. To be able to set a distinction between what the other rabbis are teaching and what he is teaching when it comes to self-denial. Yes, the other rabbis speak about denial. You know, to let go of oneself, to turn your back on the things that prevent you from becoming better or to, to kind of suppress those things in your life that's kind of leading you to, to sin or leading you to vices or negative habits in your life. But our Lord Jesus is very clear that the only way you can truly overcome those things in your life, in your flesh, is by putting to death those things that have become an obstacle to your discipleship. It needs to be put to, be put to death. You cannot just deny it by setting it aside. And that's probably why uh, when we apply it into our own lives and we see this invitation, it's probably also this, the same difference, so to speak, that we need to be mindful of when we are called to deny things in our lives. Maybe in our past Lenten experiences or maybe all throughout the year, we have desires to deny certain things in our life that prevent us from becoming better. And yet we find ourselves going back to those same habits, same sins, same uh, negative or bad uh, things that we happen in life. Why do we have to go back to those? Maybe perhaps because we, denial is not just enough, but denial by death is probably the only solution to be able to let go of those. And I think that this Lenten season, as we again come up with these desires to become better, as we come up with these desires of how we want our lives to be the best we are to be, and to let go of the things that prevent those, Maybe perhaps this time we are called to take a step further, not only to embrace self-denial, but to really deny ourselves to the point of putting to death those things. That's the only that we can find the true meaning of our lives, the true meaning of living here on earth. So that's an invitation for us today, and I think it bears a great discernment for us today as we begin our Lenten season. What do I desire to achieve this Lent? And as I look at those desires, what are the things that, have be, that are becoming an obstacle for me to achieve those? And then let's pray to the Holy Spirit to give us the grace to put those things to death in our lives. Not just to deny them by setting them aside, but to put them to death so that the life that we desire can truly become better when it comes, when we come to Easter Sunday. We now unite our prayers with the whole church for the needs of the world. For the church, as we enter this season of Lent, may God help each of us live in a manner worthy of all we have received. Let us pray to the Lord. 
for all who have left the faith. May the Good Shepherd bring them back into the fold of the church. Let us pray to the Lord. For all of us gathered here, may our fasting, prayer, and almsgiving purify our heart's desires. Let us pray to the Lord. And for all who have died, may they enter into the eternal abundant life of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. God our Father, you promise abundant life to all who follow your Son. Hear our prayers today and answer them according to your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, who become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, who become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Regard with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings we set upon this sacred altar, that bestowing on us your pardon, our oblations may give honor to your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Having received the blessing of your heavenly gifts, we humbly beseech you, Almighty God, that they may always be for us a source of both pardon and of salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With you Almighty God, who have made known to your people the ways of eternal life, lead them by that path we pray to you, the unfading light, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection implore thy help or sought thy intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto thee, O Virgin of Virgins, my mother. To thee do I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petition, but in thy mercy, hear and answer me. Please kneel. O salutaris hostia, que celipat lis hostium, bella premunt hostilia, darobo fer auxiliu, o nitrino que do Sit sempiter na gloria, qui vitam si.